Jesus came to set the captives free. Scripture tells us that he came to destroy the works of darkness, the darkness that bound you in your life. However, that binding shows up for you. Jesus came to set the captives free. And it is already done because he has already destroyed the works of darkness. But it's about bringing what is already done, the finished work of the cross, bringing it from the spiritual into this natural realm. You see, it's already done. That's why Jesus spoke, it is finished before taking his last breath. So it's already done. But it's about allowing the Holy Spirit who lives in you because you are a temple of God. It's about allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you in a way to teach you how to walk in the finished work of the cross, to teach you how to walk in this freedom, to teach you how to walk in the abundant life that Jesus came to give you. John chapter 8 verse 31 through 32 says, Then Jesus said to those who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So scripture is saying that there is a truth that sets you free. And Jesus is telling us exactly how to uh, attain that. He says, if you abide in my word. In other words, if you walk in my ways, if you follow me, if you follow my instructions, if my word abides in you and you abide in me, if you hold on to my word, if you hold on to me, that's what the if means, if you abide in my word. If you walk in my statutes, if you allow my Holy Spirit to lead you into all this truth, hold on to this, walk in this way, think in this way, live in this way, make it your lifestyle. That's what the if means. If you abide in my word, then you are truly my disciple. And he continues to say, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You see, when you're walking in the ways of God, it's not by your power or by your might. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. Because it is the Holy Spirit who leads you, takes you by the hand and leads you. It is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. So if you follow in this way, which the Holy Spirit is leading you, and don't be strayed by your own ways, by the way other people are living, by the ways of this world, or be influenced by the ways of Satan, and so on and so forth. This is why scripture says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed into the ways of God. Be transformed by your renewed mind. See, when the Holy Spirit comes in you, he begins to transform you from the inside out. He transforms you, and he leads you into this changed version of you he leads you into walking into all truth and jesus says walk in this way then you will know the truth and then the truth will set you free because the truth is already there but a lot of people are not allowing the holy spirit to take them and lead them into this truth that is already there it's already done and dusted jesus said it's finished it's already done in the spiritual realm the holy spirit is the one who leads you by the hand and helps you walk in that truth so you can bring what is already done in the spirit realm, bring it here into the natural realm. That's when you're free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So you will know that there's a truth that says free. And the only way to know this truth and allow this truth to free you from whatever is is, is tormenting you in life, from the, your whatever is binding you in his spiritual handcuffs the only way to know the truth and allow that truth to set you free is if you're walking in that truth is if you're allowing the holy spirit to lead you day by day into walking in that truth many people take the bible they read scripture they have a mental understanding of scripture but they know it here they do not know it here in their heart in their subconscious minds and so when it's time for when tribulation comes or storms of life or hard seasons because the knowledge of God is only here and not here when the storm comes they let go of the knowledge of God of the ways of God they stop walking in the ways they stop walking in the lead of the Holy Spirit that's why it's there's two different things to know the truth here and know the truth here because it is when you know the truth here that you actually start walking in that truth you see, it's already done. God has already done it. All he's saying now is, follow me. 
I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life, Jesus is saying. I am the way. I am the way to this truth, the truth that brings freedom, the truth that sets the captives free, the truth that brings life, into everything that is dead in your life. God's already done it and Jesus is saying, follow me, fellowship with me, in other words. And I will show you, I will lead you into these green pastures. I will lead you into this freedom. Because without walking in the truth, you will not be set free. You will just know the truth here. Knowing the truth and walking in the truth are two different things. Knowing the truth only does not break those spiritual handcuffs and set, and set you free, to set you free. Walking in the truth is what breaks those spiritual handcuffs and sets you free. You have to come into, an, into agreement with God. The Holy Spirit is leading you this way because this is the way of the truth. This is the way where you come into agreement with God. So the Holy Spirit is leading you, but you're saying, oh, no, I don't want to go this way. I want to go this way because all my friends are going that way or it's the new trend on social media or it's how the whole world is walking or I will look silly if I'm on this path by myself. You know, this is the fashion or for whatever reason, or that part looks scary, or I don't trust God too much, for whatever reason, fill in the gap, the excuse for you, why you are not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, why? Because when the Holy Spirit leads you, the Holy Spirit will always, always, always lead you into agreement with God. That's very important, the Holy Spirit will always lead you into agreement with God. And so, some ways, just to give you an example of what this path might look like, it will look different for different people, but it will definitely, I'll give you a few, a few keys on how it, the, the average way it will look for most people. It will look like repentance. And repentance means a change of mind. So I wasn't looking this way and thinking this way and walking this way, but I'm changing my mind. I don't think that way about God anymore. I changed my mind. I don't think that way about life anymore. I changed my mind. I don't think it, so for example, I don't think that prideful way anymore. I think humility. I don't blaspheme God or uh, uh, distrust him anymore. I trust him. I love him. Or um, I, I don't think in the way of this sickness is my portion or this bondage is my portion this is just how my life is i change my way jesus christ came to give me abundant life he paid the price for everything and i have freedom in the lord jesus christ you know repentance is it's about changing your mind and, and, and turning the other way and then walking in this other way because remember it, it is walking in the truth that sets you free not just knowing the truth it's not just knowing the truth that sets you free so repentance, what the repentance does, it takes away the ground from the enemy. The ground beneath his feet. Repentance takes away the ground from the enemy. So you're doing something in your life or there's something in your life that is giving the devil grounds to stand on. It could be drugs, it could be hate, it could be jealousy, it could be blaspheme, it could be filling the gap for you. These things that are not of God, it gives the enemy ground in your life, in your heart, to stand on. Repentance takes away that ground, so the enemy has no more grounds to stand on in your life. He's got no more ground to stand on and feed off of you. So repentance is very, very powerful. Another key that I want to give you, um, the Holy Spirit will lead you to start destroying demonic reasonings in your life, demonic thinking, demonic rationalities, uh, demonic excuses it's a demonic way of thinking um, that is just not of God um, and it could be I'm only human I can't fully stop sinning when scripture clearly says he who is in Christ does not sin or a demonic 
reasoning is um, well I've prayed to God long enough and he still hasn't healed me so um, this sickness must be God's desire for my life that's a demonic reasoning to continue holding on to the things of the devil the things that are just not of God that's why it, it, the enemy is influencing you to reason to justify why you're still why you are still there why you are still holding on to those things it could be another demonic reason is such as you know i've been doing these drugs or drinking this alcohol for so long it's just who i am now you know it, it, it gives me peace um it, it makes me feel confident you know it, so it, it's it's a demonic reasoning causing you to justify to excuse why you're still holding on to that the things of the devil and not letting them go and repenting turning the other way and walking in that truth so that truth can set you free you know you allow the holy spirit to cast down this polluted way of thinking this defiled way of thinking that is just not of god this way of thinking that is of darkness it is it is devil's reasonings you know this kind of reasoning opens the the doors for demons to come in and do their work in your life this kind of reasoning opens the spiritual doors for the devil and or his demon and or his demons to come into your life and do to you the thing that you are reasoning like um well i'm only human i can't fully stop sinning and that's a foothold scripture says don't give the devil a foothold that's a foothold he comes in and he starts to do to you exactly what you're accepting of his you know and then you close yourself off to any kind of preaching that says we're called to be holy and i'm using sin as an example once you accept the reason and it's almost like you you you, you put up these spiritual walls to block out everything that contradicts the thing that you are believing in your mind, the thing that you are believing that is of darkness. It could be something uh, like, um, well, this bondage must be my portion because, you know, God must be punishing me because I've just been living in sin, I've done so many bad things. And that is a lie from the pits of hell. Okay, so this kind of demonic reasoning or, you know, I need to live this way because it's all I know. It puts up a wall. And when someone tries to tell you something that is not in agreement with that, you kind of push it out. No, no, there's no healing for me. There's no freedom for me. There's no deliverance for me. I've tried everything. It's not possible. Healing and deliverance was something of the past when the dis with the 12 disciples of Jesus. It's not for us today. And you block out everything that contradicts that demonic reasoning. So it's, allow the Holy Spirit, and this is how it might show up, in your life and possibly these are the most common ways i'm giving you these keys are the most common ways now um uh, these are the kind of ways that the holy spirit will come into your life and uh, um, work with you among with other ways but i'm giving you the most common ways that the holy spirit uh, works in our lives but please understand that this kind of reason is they go against the knowledge of god it's going against the knowledge of God. In other words, you are feeding off of um, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Another key that I want to give you is um, that the Holy Spirit will most probably lead you into doing is uh, breaking demonic attachments. Have you noticed that there are, there are things that we're attached to? Um, and the Holy Spirit tells you, get rid of that. And you can't find it in your heart to detach from that thing. It could be an object. It could be food. It could be a person. It could be a lifestyle or something. You can't find yourself to detach from that something, even though the Holy Spirit has specifically convicted you to detach from it. When the Holy Spirit convicts you to detach from something and you can't find it in your heart to detach, there's already a demonic attachment. Otherwise, you would be able to. To detach after the Holy Spirit convicts you. Um, it could also be things like the Holy Spirit is telling you, convicting you to get rid of books or objects. So when I came to Christ, the Holy Spirit convicted me to get rid of most of my books that were on New Age, worldly books and things like that. 
personal development, self-help, anything, um, the kind of lifestyle I was in, in that season of my life when I encountered Jesus. It was all do it myself or use other powers to improve my life other than the power of Jesus. Know that anywhere and everywhere you go to seek power, to fix anything, to heal, to be free, to anything other than to Jesus, directly to Jesus, uh, you're drawing from some other kind of power. And what other power do you think that is? If it's not Jesus, then it's darkness. Because there's only two parts. There's no middle ground here. Okay? So the Holy Spirit will lead you to detach from things. Um, it could be books. It could be objects. It could be people. It could be um, a clothing. It could be anything. Acts chapter 19, verse 19. Many of, of those who practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all the people. So the Holy Spirit could be telling you to detach from this letter. Maybe someone wrote you a letter and it's causing this spiritual attachment to someone who's a narcissist or an abuser or someone that is just not of you, for you. And you can't find it in your heart. And the Holy Spirit is saying, that's not the person I have you of you. Just as an example now. And you feel that there's a spiritual attachment. You can't, you just can't find it in your heart to detach. And there could be objects that are keeping you attached, like jewelry, like letters, like clothing, like this is why the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth and you need to walk that truth so that truth can set you free. So the Holy Spirit could be leading you to detach from things, pay attention and obey the lead of the Holy Spirit. Another key is to purify. The Holy Spirit will definitely, definitely lead you to purify yourself. Okay. It will help you to purify yourself. He will ask you to change um, uh, uh, the way of speaking, your language, because both life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who speak it will eat his fruit. He will lead you to, he may lead you to uh, change your company, uh, the friends around you. Scripture says bad company corrupts good character. He may lead you to change your surroundings. So the way you used to hang out, where you used to socialize, your environment, the Holy Spirit might be telling you, you know, you've outgrown, outgrown that, that's not for you anymore, or if you stay in that environment, it can draw you back, and it's your job to obey the lead of the Holy Spirit, because where is the Holy Spirit always leading you? Into all truth. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Staying in this place where the Holy Spirit is saying no, is not knowing the truth, it's not walking in the truth, and that's why you're not being set free. Okay, remember, Jesus has already done it. It's about bringing what he's already done, the finished work of the cross, bringing what he's already done from the spiritual realm into this natural realm. And to materialize it in this natural realm, you need to start walking in this truth. And the, that's why the Holy Spirit is here, to lead you into all of this truth. So the Holy Spirit will lead you to start purifying yourself, you know, um, maybe get rid of, distance yourself from people or detach from people. Uh, Change your ways, because did you know that your children can manifest you? Your character, your your ways. You can manifest people's characters and behaviors too. You notice you're around some people before you know it, you start speaking like them, you start behaving like them, you know. First Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be deceived, the bad company corrupts good character. Mm. Okay. So I've just given you a few examples of what it might look like. It could be some of these, it could be all of these, but there will def definitely be more ways that the Holy Spirit is leading you uh, to change to change your ways so, so you can learn to walk in this truth that Jesus paid the price for with his blood, with his life. Learn to walk this truth because without walking the truth, although the truth is there, if you're not walking it, it will not set you free and you will remain in these spiritual chains. So with that being said, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, all for the glory of God our Father. And we thank God for his Holy Spirit who lives in us and is leading us every single day. There are links below. Check them out. God bless you.